Colnago. 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 Okay, so the other day I made a video about the Colnago C64, and while I was researching that video, I came across a very cool web page on the Colnago website uh, called the Colnago Hall of Fame. On this website, there's basically just a gallery of bikes from Colnago that have won various races. We've got the World Championship bikes, 1981 through to 2014 in the mountain bikes. There's some Paris-Roubaix bikes and Grand Tour victory bikes and so on and so forth. Anyway, fascinated by bikes the way that I am, I thought it'd be cool to overlay some of these bikes together and see how things have changed through the ages or through the years. So that's what I've done. So the first bike that I got up to have a look at was from 1981, Freddy Martens. Might be how you pronounce it, possibly. He was world champion. Uh, that took place in Prague. He was riding this Colnago. This is a great example of what bikes look like in 1981. So obviously all external cable routing, steel frame. Stem was, I think it's called a quill stem. Yeah, so back then the stem basically had a bolt that went through the top and it pulled up this little wedge that then clamped it into position. And that was called a quill stem. And that slotted into what was then the... The headset bearings which was a, uh, a threaded headset basically the top of the fork had some threads on it that you then lock these nuts onto that's now different on modern bikes we'll have a look at that when we get there but that's what we were looking at on race bikes in 1981 you had the shifters on the down tube back then they wouldn't have been indexed i don't think so it would have just have to move it until it felt in the right position you obviously had the the brakes and the brake levers with the cables coming out the top unbelievably skinny tires box section aluminium rims steel forks with big curves in them toe clips looks like Colnago made their own group set unbelievably tiny little cassette on the back and in fact the dropouts look like you could pull them the back wheel backwards and forwards a bit nice little touch here on the seat post with the Italian flag on so there we go pretty cool so just before I go on to the next bike from Carl Nargo something that just popped into my head was I made a video probably a few months ago now about the Cannondale CAD 12 also the Cannondale Super 6 and how their frame shapes look quite old-fashioned well what I thought I'd do was just offer up the CAD 12 to this bike from 1981 and just sort of show you what I mean by that and you can see there that very similar angles and that's why the CAD 12 and Super 6 look a little bit old-fashioned because that's quite an old bike so there we go I just wanted to show that okay so the next bike up in the Carl Nargo Hall of Fame that I had a look at was this one here Beppe Saroni might be how you pronounce it world champion he won that at Goodwood 1982 clearly a very different stature of rider quite a bit smaller than old Freddy and what was great about the steel frames back then was you could very much cut the tubes up stick them in the jig and make them exactly the shape for the particular rider that was a definite bonus back then nowadays with the carbon frames it's very expensive to make individual different sizes and less which Carl Nargo do they use lugged carbon frames to change the sizes if someone out there knows whether Carl Nargo still will make bespoke frames for different size people write in the comment below because I don't really know so just look in between these two bikes I can't really see any other technical technological advances moving on next one Abraham Olano world champion Dewey Tama 1995 Dewey Tama don't know if that's how you pronounce it but that is in Colombia there we go and that's Marco Pantani on the the podium with him uh, who came third and to the right of Alano would have been Miguel Indurain who came second and this is Alano's bike and if we just flip between that and Beppe Saroni's bike we can see a few changes there so that's 82 to 95 it's quite a big jump these shifters have now moved from the down tube into the brake levers quite a big advancement there now the other thing we notice straight away is the forks are now straight and I may have this wrong you might be able to tell me better but I think that means that the forks are now carbon could be wrong carbon fork soaks up more road vibration which is why I think they moved away from the curved steel ones might be wrong let me know if I am the other thing that we notice is Alano's bike has a more compact set of chain rings on it 
definitely got a more modern looking saddle on it that's for sure a little thing but also it's now got a seat clamp that's separate to the actual frame these used to be a bit of a nightmare if they got rusty I remember that on my old bike moving on Johan Miseo's world champion Lugano 1996 riding for the legendary Mappe squad 1996 so not a big jump here in time but what differences can we see quite similar size riders the main difference here is the change in geometry Museo has used front end has got a very different head angle on it much more laid back Ooh, and something that I missed was between 1982 and 1995 we've gone to not only a Gima uh, Gimano, not only to a Shimano Dura Ace group set but we've also gone clipless pedal which is where the confusing naming system for pedals came from because this is a toe clip pedal and this is a clipless pedal even though you're clipped in so people who just start riding bikes that's quite confusing the other thing is the stem I think it still is a quill stem but it's quite a different shape it's starting to look more like they do now 1996 so let's just move on to the next one okay Oscar Kamenzind Kamenzind sorry about that Oscar don't know how to pronounce that Walkenberg 1998 so this is a couple of years on and we've got quite a big change here looking at Oscar's bike here that is looking well we'll talk about these wheels in a minute but it's looking a bit more modern there which has now got me thinking i maybe have missed it changing over to carbon so i'm looking here on the wikipedia page for Calnago. they definitely started using carbon in 1988 just going back to alano's frame that is definitely that's welded steel right somebody correct me if i'm wrong this is lugged steel then if we go to museos that could be well you tell me somebody maybe that's carbon i can't tell anyway oscar's bike we've now switched over to the modern headset design and the modern stem design so now most modern bikes have this it's the threadless headset which means that there is a star nut in the fork and the bolt comes down through the top of the top cap or stem cap and screws into the star nut clamping it all together and holding fork and the bearings so that you don't have any play and as long as you've got a long enough fork steerer you can change the stack height of the bike which is pretty cool so obviously Oscar's quite a lot smaller than Museo our cassette started to get a little bit bigger because it was still pretty tiny there the old pros used to like to grind it out check out these wheels I believe that these are now banned in the peloton because of safety concerns kind of work like guillotines if you got your head stuck in there that said you can use wheels similar to that on your time trial bike so yeah pretty cool bike that moving on another name that i've never been able to pronounce oscar ferrari ferrari sorry about that oscar again oscar uh we've obviously scrapped those rather cool magnum wheels we've got the startings of an aero wheel there nice carbon deep section aero wheel anything else of note Forks have got a bit of a different shape to them. It's got a very beefy seat stay there as well. B stay. Wonder what that was all about. It's going to be a stiff old ride, I'd have thought. Again, riding for the Mappe team. I think I'm right in saying that the Mappe team became Quick Step. Again, correct me if I'm wrong there. I think that's right. Okay, so that was 2001. This is Yaroslav Popovich. You might recognize that name. He won the under 23s World Championship in Lisbon. What I did miss there is the Oscars bike. Definitely carbon, because it's got carbon written on it. Same as Yaroslav. Okay, so moving on. Ah, another one from Oscar Ferreri. Ferreri. Verona, 2004 World Champion. We compare that to his 2001 bike. Quite a big difference there in the uh, frame size or the frame geometry. He's definitely dropped it down at the front quite a bit. We've also got the more aero group sets coming in, slightly bigger cassette coming in. And that's the C50. Different style of saddle coming in there from that San Marco, maybe. You can obviously see the rails on the saddle there very clearly. If you go back to 1981, did those saddles have rails on? Could you put that saddle on this bike? Don't know. If you know the answer to that, let me know. That was 2004, 2008. Now, the reason I've popped this one in is actually not a road bike. This is a cyclocross bike. This was Lars Boom, who's still riding today, but on the road, he won the World Cyclocross Championship in Treviso, 2008. 
Lars Boom is pretty tall, six foot three, and I'm guessing Oscar's quite a bit shorter. Let's look at the difference in geometry there, which I thought was quite hilarious. What I have just noticed is that Oscar's 2004 bikes actually got these sort of flexi bits here. He didn't have those on his other bike. Totally missed that on the first viewing. Next up. 2011. Now this bike's looking a lot more like it's from this century. Thomas Vokler. Retired now and things have moved on quite a bit there from 2004 to 2011. This is looking much more like the bikes that we're riding now. Obviously full carbon lugged frame, internal cable routing, aero bars, carbon levers, midsection carbon wheels, compact Nolo group set. So the only thing I can see there that isn't bang up to date for now is that it's not electronic. It's still mechanical group set. Nice bike, very charismatic rider. Yeah, shame he's retired. Next, 2013. Again, this is the World Cyclocross Champion, Sven Nies. And the reason I've put this bike in is it's the first one in the Hall of Fame that has got an electronic group set. And if you remember, the battery pack used to sit on the down tube there, which even back then I remember thinking that that looked horrible. And it does look horrible. That's obviously the Dura Ace. I guess they called it DI2 back then. Well, I say back then, 2013, that's not that long ago, is it? Maybe that's an early flexi seat post made out of carbon. Okay, it's 2015. Elisa Longo Borghini. She's five foot six and she won the Tour of Flanders in 2015. And if you compare that to Lars Boom's cross country bike, I thought that was quite a good indicator of the difference in rider height and geometry of the bike. She's got a very compact group set going on there and this will be the Compact Nolo Super Record electronic group set from 2015. And what is very cool is she's got the Ferrari badge on there. That's 2015, that's pretty much up to date there. All the bikes I've taken out of the Hall of Fame. So here we go, ultra modern Colnago C64 disc. So you can buy this, Dura Race Di2, £10,000 approximately. And this is where we are now. And if you compare that with Freddy's bike from 1981, you can see how far we've come Technolo technologically. We've obviously got the disc brakes, we've got the electronic DI2 group set, we've got a much wider spread of gears, we've got the deep section carbon wheels, we've got the big fat tyres, We've got the much fatter tube profiles. We've got the different headset. We've got very different geometry. We've gone to sort of a more compact frame, much longer seat tube, more comfortable. There's no pedals on here, but you've obviously got the clip-in pedals. You'd probably have a power meter on there somewhere. So yeah, things have moved on quite a lot, haven't they? So there we go. That's my look at the Carl Nargo Hall of Fame. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe to my channel.